Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist D.T. from WeatherWist.com, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe. It's a Monday evening, Labor Day, and hopefully you're having a very nice holiday. It's uh, 9 p.m. here in the east, uh, 6 p.m. on the west coast. Let's talk weather. A lot to talk about this issue, uh, even though it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of weather going on with the tropics and not much going on in the Midwest of the Plain States, but actually there is. Uh, we're going to be talking about a brief review of the summer because everyone's perception of the summer is significantly different. The Plains and the Midwest have had a much different summer than what we've had on the East Coast. Also, we'll be talking about the dry pattern for the Plains of the Midwest, continuing for another 10 days, seasonal temperatures in the East, any chances of an early frost, a lot of talk about that back in August, but that looks like chances of that are decreasing a little bit. And then more problems for the tropics. All right, we're going to talk, start off by taking a look at the uh, summer overall. This is June to the end of August. This is the departure from normal precipitation. As you can see in the Midwest, you see those uh, peach colors there. That's uh, a four to eight inches below normal rainfall for the summer over Iowa, northern Missouri, western Illinois, and uh, even into eastern Nebraska, about four inches there. But of course, if you look up and down the East Coast, Pretty good rain there, no problems at all. Rainfall and averaging actually four inches above normal in Virginia, uh, portions of the mid-Atlantic up into New England. But if you go down to North Carolina, down to Georgia, it's actually running about uh, 8 to 12 or 16 inches above normal. So it's been a very different type of summer depending on where you're located. Now this is relative to normal, this percentage of normal precipitation. Uh, and you can see, again, if you look over the Midwest, again, we're talking specifically the upper Mississippi Valley or the western Corn Belt areas. So look at Nebraska, look at the eastern Dakotas, look at northern Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and central and northern Illinois. You can see anywhere from 25 to 75% of normal, a lot of areas of 25% of normal precipitation. Then there's a band, if you notice, running from southern to Kansas and northern Oklahoma all the way into Kentucky and Tennessee of above normal rainfall. And, of course, you can see down in the southeastern states from Alabama up into Virginia, large areas, 150 to 200, 300 percent above normal rainfall. And then uh, pretty good rains up into the New England as well. So a lot depends on where you are for, this, uh, for your impression of the summer. Now, with regard to temperatures, well, everybody east of the Rockies has had a pretty cool summer. There's not been a lot of heat. And keep in mind that this is after the very hot week we had last week in the Midwest states. If that had not occurred, this map would look even cooler than it was. And then, uh, again, this is uh, for now this is just this here is just for August. This is the percentage of normal precipitation for the entire month. Look at the upper Mississippi Valley there or the western Corn Belt states in northern Missouri. Iowa, look at all of Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Minnesota, the eastern Dakotas. That dark red, folks, is anywhere from 5 to 25 percent of normal rainfall. That is a hot, dry month. And for those of you who are trading beans and stuff like that, that's one of the reasons why the bean prices have exploded. Okay, but even on the East Coast, there's been some drying as well, if you noticed, as well, a little bit. Now, and this, this is temp temperatures for the month of uh, August here. Again, especially east of the Mississippi River. And I don't know if this is going to mean anything for the autumn or for the winter, but as you can see, August was a very cool month east of the Mississippi River, with many areas seeing anywhere from 2 to as much as 4 degrees below normal, depending on your location. All right, let's take a look at the actual overall pattern here. Now, this is the European model from this Monday afternoon, and we can see that the uh, trough is coming in here. we got a pretty nice trough over eastern Canada, Quebec, a nice ridge on the west coast. The uh, bright reds there, that represents the extreme heat. That was the heat that was over the Midwest. That's now been pushed back towards the drought areas of the western United States, over California and the southwestern states and the Rockies. So this is the next cold front coming through here on Wednesday that will uh, dry things out for the east coast, eastern United States, and lower humidity. And then this next map here, this is a week from today, and we can see the heat dome here is trying to come back a little bit. And I'll point it out to you. You can see it right in this area in here. See how it's trying to come back here, build back a little bit towards the Midwest. The trough is out here now. It's moved off the coast. But there's another little disturbance here, which may bring some rain to portions of the plains of the Midwest down the road. We'll see. I'm not sure if it's going to. Certainly the European turned wetter tonight. And then by day 10, we have yet another. Uh, notice what's happened here is the ridge is pushed back up this way here, as you can see. Oops, let me go here. And then uh, we have another tr short wave here, another trough coming in here. There's the ridge. You see the flow. So it's a pretty cool pattern for most of the country, the Midwest and the eastern United States. But it's a dry pattern. That flow coming out of Canada, you're not getting a lot of precipitation there at all. So that's kind of what the problem is. 
Now, it's the European ensembles versus the operational run. Uh, the one over here, in case you don't know, on the left-hand side, this is the ensembles here. As you can see, this is the ensemble. And notice the gen general overall pattern, ridge, trough, like that. So again, that's a dry pattern. That's the ensemble mean, and you're not going to get a lot of uh, precipitation for that. So it looks like going into mid-September, things look pretty dry for everybody east of the Rockies. Not a lot of precipitation in this pattern at all. And this is the day nine uh, map, the comparison, the GF, the European is on the left-hand side here. I'll draw it in so you can see it. Here's the uh, Euro right here, as you can see. And uh, this here is a GFS. There you go. And the pattern, notice the European is a little more of upslope here and a bit more of a trough here. But the GFS is sort of similar, just a little, not quite as strong. Notice the ridging here, folks. See this? This is a Scandinavia block. Okay, this is not a negative NAO per se. This is a Scandinavian block. It may retrograde and build into Greenland and become a negative NAO, but in, in actuality, this is called a Scandinavian block. And um, what it does is it puts a trough here in the, uh, over the Mediterranean for Great Britain and, and United for uh, Spain as well, and some moisture uh, next week possible for Western Europe. All right. So uh, that's how it looks. Now let's talk about the MJO here for the second half of September. Now, in this here is the uh, folks. Uh, this is the uh, uh, projection here from Albany, uh, Kyle and uh, uh, Kyle McRitchie. And as you can see, what he's showing here now is that the MJO, which is now in, uh, I guess this here now moves into phase. Uh, uh, one and phase two which is good for tropical development but once you get at the end of the month look what happens here. instead of going out to three or four it begins to move towards a neutral zone this way and begins to lose its impact so what that may be telling us is that and the reason why that's important because phase four is actually a pretty good signal for a cold early season cold air mass in the upper plains of the Midwest. So if the MGO never gets into phase four, you might not get that. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. The other models on the MGO, this is the uh, European. Notice what the European is doing. It goes right through and out this way. See that? So it ignores phase four, which is the cold cycle. That's what's interesting here. It goes right over to the phase six. And then the next one here, this here is the... Uh, uh, you, this is the UCMET, the British model. Again, look what it's doing here. It's going right through phase here's one. It goes boom right through this way to phase six. Does not go into phase four. So again, that's telling me that maybe there might not be a phase four coming up. The Canadian briefly goes into phase four, and um, so and if we see why that's important, let's take a look here. Which one is the cold one? Phase here, phase four. Let me highlight it. You can see it right there. See it. Phase four, there you go. Notice the cold in here for phase four. If it goes into phase six, that's warm. Phase five, that's warm. That's not cold. So if the MJO is actually going to be doing that, you see what it's doing? It's, it avoids the entire cold cycle. There you go. And that's why it's, that's what might be important. So that's telling me we might not see a frost at all in September, the second half of September. With regard to rainfall, uh, phase four, there's a little bit of moisture right in here, as you can see in the upper Midwest. Phase five is pretty dry. Phase six, a little moisture in there. So maybe there's some hope coming up here uh, for getting some moisture, but not a lot. This is not very wet uh, pattern here. A little better than it has been, but nothing to write home to mom about. And let's finally let's talk about some more problems for the tropics here. Uh, this here is the latest, uh, uh, you know, Sal, the uh, Saharan uh, dead dust coming out of the uh, African coast, as you can see it. It comes up very nicely, and you can see the uh, huge bl blast of dust here uh, coming up. Um, where is it? I believe it's right here. And uh, you can see it right in this whole area. They will actually hide out in the blue, so you can probably see a little better. Very intense dust, and it's busting out again into the Atlantic Ocean. There's our next tropical wave. If it stays south, there's the other one over here. But as you'll see in a minute, the dust, the dust is, look, is supposed to, is being modeled by many of the models to explode. Now, this is the GFS here. Uh, the NASA uh, model here. Is it the GFS? Actually, this is not the GFS. This is from NASA, and they do a lot of dust modeling. Now, this is based off the GFS, but I don't think it's a GFS model. And these are from the folks at Weather Bell, as you can see. And notice here's a dust cloud there, and this is uh, right now, right in here. This is now um, 72 hours out, and I believe this is um, 120 hours out. And notice that it explodes out into the Atlantic Ocean. See this? So that's really bad news if you for any sort of tropical development. Assuming that's correct, and it looks like it's going to be. That's a pretty big dust cloud that's developing. So that's another problem to deal with. And we can now why is it doing that? Well, this is the surface map here from the Atlantic. And um, 
and 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 as you can see let me point out this huge high which is up here in the azores you can see it right here see this baby look at this very powerful system and it extends down to here and what that's doing is that's producing an east wind which is pulling the dust off africa into the tropical atlantic and we can see that with a bit more clarity here make sure i got the right map up yeah Okay, and uh, this here is the uh, sea surface temperature map. And to show you the impact of it, you see this burst of uh, really warm water right here in the, uh, in the, um, in, off the coast of Africa. Let me uh, highlight it so you can see it. See this baby right in here? This is because, this may be because of the dust is so hot coming off Africa and it dumps in here that's causing the water to spike. Meanwhile, here's the Azores High, and look at the cool water up in this way. So this is clearly indicating that the Azores High is having a big impact in the eastern Atlantic Ocean in terms of causing a lot of dust to come off the African coast and sweep out into the central and tropical Atlantic and hurting the hurricane season in terms of any development of the Cape Verde season. That's what this is. That's why this is important here. And we can see the impact of this high even better. Now, this is the European model for the last 90 days. Uh, excuse me. This is the actual precipitation analysis, not the European. This is from Europe for the last 90 days. And as you can see it. Uh, notice how dry it is up in here. This is very impressive. How, how dry it is right in this area. And last, this is through all the way to the summer months. Close to normal in France, but dry in Germany. This is because the Azores highs is blocking the moisture here. And if we go further back and we look at more recently, this is the last 30 days. Look how dry it's been in Europe. Wow. That is a dry August for everybody. Very impressive. And then if we look at here, this is the last 14 days. And again, goodness gracious, look how dry it has been for all of Western Europe. And there's the Azores High sitting there going, no rain, no rain at all. <laughs> so very impressive looking pattern here. And I think the Azores High is the, one of the main reasons why it's been hitting everybody. Now, this is the European model. Uh, and we can see this is the, from the folks at Storm Vista. Now, this is 108 hours out. And I wanted to point out again, look, here's the Azores High making another comeback. See that? And look what it's doing. Here's the wind. Boom. Pulling that dust in. And that's one of the reasons why I think these models are forecasting this much dust. Now, at uh, day seven, the European actually has a tropical system here. I believe this is, a, this is a pretty strong tropical wave developing right here, maybe a tropical depression right there. But again, we can see the winds. See those winds coming in from the high right there? Very impressive. And then finally, um, I'm going to clear this out. And then finally, this is day 10. Now, I, I believe this may be the first time the European model all season long has shown a tropical cyclone. A uh, pretty well developed one in the middle of the tropical Atlantic at day 10. I don't think it has shown that once. The GFS has shown it many times. The European, I believe, has not shown it a single time. So maybe that means something. I don't know. And the Azores High moves out towards the central Atlantic a little bit. And I think the flow off Africa is beginning to, to weaken. And maybe that mean, might mean the dust is beginning to weaken as well. So anyway, that's this, this week in weather. And uh, I guess I'll catch it on the Facebook page. This is Meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.